All right, everybody. In this video, we are going to go over symbolic math in Python. To do that, we're going to use SymPy. SymPy for awesome calculus. So to get started, we're going to start up our Jupyter Notebook, import our required libraries. Otherwise, let's get started. Import SymPy as SY. I'm going to do an import statement like this because it'll make static typing, or not static typing, autocomplete a little bit easier. For example, if I want to do sy dot, uh, and then see whatever the heck is in Simpy's namespace, I have that right at my disposal. You'll see a lot of people do from Simpy import star. So if you did from Simpy import star, you just do symbols equals x, y, z, instead of sy dot symbols. Anyways, if you want to do it this way, just take a look at my Jupyter Notebook and whatever, whenever you see sy dot, remove that. But for me, I like it the other way. So I'm going to revert it. So getting started, Sim SimPy is a symbolic math software and it revolves around symbols. So x, y, and z are all mathematical symbols when I define them as that. This function here enables MathJax, which makes the math look much easier to read. If you're doing any sort of documentation, I highly suggest you doing this right here. Now, getting started with the actual calculus in this video, I'm going to start off by creating, creating an expression. Creating the cosine of x function is as easy as this. Once I have that, I can call the derivative of that. So the derivative of cosine of x is negative sine of x. You can take more than one derivative at the same time. This will take the third derivative of x to the fourth, which will evaluate to 24x. Another alternative way to do that is to call whichever variable you want to differentiate upon and then the number or the nth derivative that you want to take. Same thing. All this does is chain it. So if you want to do a more complicated derivative, you can take that same expression, differentiate it to the second derivative of y, and then take that derivative, the derivative of that differentiated upon x, you'll get this. If you don't believe me that that evaluates, we can go check it out in Mathematica. So we're going to take e and then that. Now we're going to take the y derivative, the second y derivative, and take the x derivative. And if we simplify it, it'll give us e to the x times y times z times x times z squared times 2 plus x times y times z. Going back to SymPy, we can see that it evaluates to the same thing. So as you can see, SymPy turns out to be a pretty powerful software. Anyways, we can take a more complicated derivative, such as this. So it'll be the derivative of that expression, the derivative of x, then differentiate upon y, the second derivative of y, then take the fourth derivative of z, and you get this complicated function right here which is something that I will not be doing by hand. Nope, it did not like that. That is because I didn't evaluate it. I didn't, uh, must have missed a variable there. Moving on, uh, creating unevaluated derivatives allows you to postpone when the function actually does its evaluation. Uh, it's a very or it's the same it's the same syntax as diff the diff function but instead of doing the algorithms immediately it'll wait until you explicitly call the do it method so if you create a derivative class pass in your expression and then how you want to differentiate it it'll give you the unevaluated form and then calling do it will evaluate it Integral calculus is another important thing that you'll probably be doing in calculus class. 
if we create a new function, as seen here, and we take the integral of x, of that function over x, you can see we get this. For definite integrals, you can pass the arguments. SymPy offers passing the arguments in a tuple format. So as creating an expression, and we will pass this expression into here. That is what it looks like. And pass that expression. We want to integrate over x from zero to infinity. Now this is a very cool thing right here. Senpai's infinity is sy dot o o o as in omega. <clears throat> it's in the senpai namespace. That's why. That's one of the reasons why I import it as sy, so you know where in the world this is coming from. Because this looks like zero zero to some people. I mean, you can tell that this is zero, but this makes it very clear that this is a senpai function. Doing the integral of that gives us this square root of pi over 2. For indefinite integrals, you can pass multiple arguments or multiple limit tuples. That way it'll perform the multiple integral. So doing multiple integrals with Python is, is a breeze when you use uh, SymPy. So creating a new function here. And if we integrate it, integrate the x, from negative infinity to infinity, and then integrate y over negative infinity to infinity, we have pi. As with the derivative, you can also do the unevaluated integral, and that way it will be a lazy evaluated integral if that's your thing. Doing the same thing, so pass our function, tell it what we want to integrate over. It'll give us the unevaluated form. And if we do it, it'll do it. There's powerful algorithms going on behind the scenes, which is why it, it may be to some people's best interest to not immediately evaluate it. I'm gonna show some examples seen below. And for some of them, you can see why potentially doing lazy evaluation is a good idea especially for this. See, look at how long that took to evaluate. If you had like a web application going and you had to wait that long for it to evaluate, uh, it might be best to do it in a lazy fashion. One more, not one more, but another cool thing you can do with SymPy is limits. So with the limit, we're gonna take the limit as x approaches zero for this function here. So we create our expression yet again, and take the limit of x as it approaches zero, comes out to one. This is where having matplotlib comes in handy because this becomes very self-explanatory once you see it. So as you take the limit as x approaches zero, on both sides, it'll approach one. Very easy to see with SymPy's plot method. Now, not all functions are symmetrical or not all functions have the limit the same on both sides. So you can pass the plus or the negative to associate which side you're going to compute from. So one divided by X, we're gonna take the limit of X for 0 0.2 on the plus side. It'll give us five, and if we do it with the negative, it'll be five. Now I change this, if we do zero, if we take, find zero, let's see how that works. So on the negative side, it's negative infinity. On the positive side, it's infinity. And if we plot it, it's, this one's actually not such a good plot, but it goes kind of like this. I hope that makes sense. It's kind of hard to see with that graph. The last thing I'm gonna go over is series expansion. SymPy handles series as well. So if we create an expression, then we call that expression series method, 
which is different. So the expression itself actually has its own series function built in. Calling that there. I'm not too deep into series methods, but if you want to read more about it, put your cursor inside the function definition there, press shift tab, and you can read about it. This is just some examples of that. And if you don't want the order term, you can use the remove zero function. Oops, something that I didn't really think too much about until I started reading up on this. Pretty neat function. And you can choose arbitrary limit points as well by setting the x0. Anyways, that is how you do calculus in Python. I hope this helps. If you have any questions, leave a comment in the description. Thanks.